Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 SimPilot. Today a very exciting video. We are taking a look at a preview build of the upcoming Just Flight Avro Vulcan B2 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a very exciting release. We don't see many uh, aircraft of this sort of type in Flight Simulator uh, and you don't see the Vulcan appear very often either. This is a four turbojet engined the a nuclear bomber it's that is basically what it was designed to be and it has been a big part of british aviation history if you grew up in the uk you would have certainly heard a lot about the vulcan or seen it display uh, and the charity around that is still actually running but it's a really really uh, impressive machine to see in the air it makes a huge noise it's smaller than concord but it has four olympus engines in it so it is a powerful powerful machine and it was used in some really amazing demonstrations of long range flying and it was also a icon in terms of its shape it is a really really pretty airplane to look at in the sky it is of course a delta wing another unusual thing the british uh, v bombers as this aircraft was a part of the the v bomber force uh, were all quite unique in their appearance and this one is uh, is no exception really really nice to look at and just flight have brought it to us with an extensive study of a real vulcan aircraft they have put a lot of effort into recording the sounds of every switch in the flight deck and the texturing and the uh, systems on board are all there and they've also gone to the effort of finding out how the aircraft was uh, to like to fly by speaking to real Vulcan crews as well as recording the correct sounds for the different aircraft engines so at the moment uh, we have the 301 engines in this model of the b2 we're in Vulcan 607 this one was made famous this particular uh, aircraft for its participation in operation black buck during the Falklands War. There is a fantastic book called Vul Vulcan 607, which I highly recommend if you're interested uh, in finding a bit more out about this airplane and what it got up to. But we are going to take a look at this preview build. As I say, this is a work in progress, not the final product. So there'll be more improvements and more features added by the time it releases. But here we go. Let's take a look at what, uh, what you can expect from this aircraft. So here we are choosing our Vulcan in the menu. You have the Avro Vulcan B Mark II, both variants, but we have the 201 engine and the 301 engine. So both of them are Mark II, but the different engine types. In the 201 engine, which I don't currently have the sound pack for, I believe that's coming from Just Flight at a later date, uh, possibly by release, I'm not sure. But here we have a lot more liveries for the 201 version. This is the more famous variant in many ways. Um, it's the one that makes that iconic howling noise. And here we have the 558, which is the display model. Uh, in a couple of different liveries so that's pretty uh, pretty great to see so many liveries included mostly a similar theme you'll see here the Vulcan uh, B2 flew around most of its time in this sort of low level camouflage uh, which is of course what it was designed for although they do have this flashpoint livery um, which is obviously designed for nuclear delivery and uh, yeah or anti-flash livery but there we go uh, you have the 301 which is what we use today if we click through to this version and we can see we have a few different squadrons and of course the famous Vulcan 607 which was used in the operation uh, Black Buck as you can see here so that's the one we'll take today and um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that mission uh, it's something that uh, is is yeah very famous very good book written on it by Roland White highly recommend it if you're interested in military aviation and we'll load it up on the runway we're expecting this aircraft to release on Tuesday 28th November 2023 so not long to wait now. It's got a surprisingly low price I would say at uh, 2799 pounds sterling or 2995 euros 3299 dollars. So yeah, that's uh, that's very pleasant to see for what is as you'll see is an incredibly detailed aircraft this is not in any way a light <laughs> um, aircraft this is a, a serious simulation of the Vulcan. It's also accessible because you can of course load it up on the runway and get flying you can also use the efb as we'll see to adjust the panel states into cold and dark and ready for start and so on but it is also all there if you want to flick every switch in that light deck and start finding out what it does uh, pretty much all of it's there I, I don't i haven't found anything that i've been looking for that hasn't worked so far i'm sure there must be something but i've yet to find it if there is <laughs> Here we are on the flight deck of the Vulcan. Very small, very cramped. It's a, 
uh, a very specific design. This aircraft was originally launched in the 50s, if you can believe that, although not the B2 variant, but even so, it is a, an old, old design and it has very restrictive view out the front, especially. Uh, I believe this flight deck was originally designed for a single pilot and they actually realized they needed to. So you have this sort of really, really quite cramped design. Um, so it must have been quite something to fly long range missions in this machine. But anyway, as we come down to the EFB, um, and by the way, as I said earlier, you can look around and you'll see that all these switches work. It's really, really ridiculous. Uh, and it's such a different flight deck. This is a real learning curve. If you want to take this airplane and do cold and dark, you absolutely can. It all works and you can do so using the inbuilt checklists. Uh, as you can see, the first item, internal check 68 items, but they are all labeled and crucially you can tick. Let me see if I can find oxygen. You can get it to highlight where you uh, where you should be going. So you can see here, there's the oxygen. You can turn it on and off which is just fantastic i'm a big big fan of that system as i always say in these videos and it's great to see just fly have gone to the effort of doing it in a cockpit that is as confusing and complex as this one what i want to do though is show you here on the efb that we can actually adjust the config of the aircraft so we can put in the nuclear bomb into the mid bay uh, which is the WE-177 and I don't know if we could also fit anything else in. No, I don't think we can. I think that's pretty <laughs> pretty comprehensively filling the bomb bay. But we can also add some pods to the wings. We've got the covers installed and the chocks and the bomb doors are currently open, I believe. Uh, but we can also do that using the actual controls on the aircraft once it's powered up. You can change the viewpoint here, so that's quite handy. Each of the different view stations has the option to tick through. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. So let's take a look around the outside. You'll notice that the detailing is, is excellent. The texturing is slightly more matte than you might have expected. Just Flight have released some fantastic aircraft, one of my absolute favorites being their Hawk, uh, which was developed by Just Flight. And that is more glossy, which I think shows off some of the, the lighting in the simulator very well. This is more matte, which is accurate to the real aircraft. If you see uh, any pictures of the real one, or if you've seen one at a static display, there's quite a few of them around at museums in the UK, um, you'll notice that it is a very matte sort of paint scheme. So that is accurate, but it does slightly um, dampen the the effects of some of the flight simulators nice lighting and reflections and so on um, but that's not to say it's inaccurate like I say it's just a a fact of the airplane if it was shiny that wouldn't look right I think it's a, a very very nice visual model of course it's so super accurate on the dimensions and if you look at all the little details along that leading edge of the wing this was a, a development from the original Vulcan which was much more triangular and then they increased the surface area of the wing and in, uh, added to that leading edge with a bit of a droop down which is very common now as we see on Delta wing swept uh, aircraft such as Concorde and so on and many many others uh, but yeah that slight droop along the leading edge a bit like having slats They've really, really captured it. If you've ever walked underneath the Vulcan, you have this huge, expansive wing, and it's uh, yeah, it, it's quite an impressive machine. Here we have those Olympus 301 engines in this variant that we're using today. So the other variant included is the 201 engine. That makes an iconic howl. It's a really fantastic noise. Uh, like I say, not included in this sound pack that I'm using today, but it is going to be included uh, in the aircraft when you get hold of it, I believe, or if not, soon after. We've got the Bombay doors open, as you can see, so a modeled uh, Bombay, and this time we've got loaded in this uh, uh, nuclear missile, I believe it is. I, I don't know much about it, uh, I must confess, but uh, that is what's in here. They've modeled several other configurations, so if we hop back into the flight deck briefly, then uh, we can simply, on the EFB, swap over, and uh, let's put in the um, Mark 13. We can have three rungs of those, and there they are. So quite a lot, actually quite an impressive amount of, uh, of loading for this aircraft um, so yeah that's nice to see you can see the details all around all these labels decals the reason they've had the ability to do this is just like and they've shown on their, their youtube channel they got access to the real aircraft and were just pouring over it grabbing every detail they could to get it into the simulator so that's really nice to see even got the intake covers which is really really good fun back in the flight deck and just to demonstrate you uh, to you to the detail you can move all these armrests out of the way and they've actually got the sounds associated and even this center console presumably this was uh, designed like this so that you can actually the pilots could fit up through this ladder here um, into the into the flight deck and then it can be lifted up and out for this control panel for i think this is the fuel pumps so yeah really really great and if you listen you'll hear all these sounds are all modeled
so yeah hopefully that gives you a, just a little bit of a taster of what you can expect that you can sit here and you can move all these switches around and you will get the correct audio for it which is really really great to see also we can of course choose a different setting so if we go cold and dark it gives us that classic just light <laughs> cold and dark selected read back and then we can select ready for start and you'll see things like ground power it's removed the covers it's closed the bomb doors outside and there's our little ground power unit so the airplane's being prepared for a start let's get rid of these pods on the wing what we can also do is try and start up an engine so let's start up an engine uh, there is the full procedure for this available um, the manual includes a really detailed set of instructions on how to use this aircraft it also includes a, tu a tutorial flight as they always do at just flight which is really really excellent and of course as i said earlier you can go through the checklists and follow uh, each item and it will guide you through it including the engine starting checklist rapid start for example so there is a lot of uh of things uh, to help you get through it but it is a, a complex machine and I'm not going to be able to take you through the full thing today in this video. Unfortunately, I haven't had the time. But what we can do is start up the engine and I'll give you the noise so you can you can see what you think of that. Starting with engine one then. It's ready. The air cross bleed is open. I'm going to press the start button. Then we can see down here the engine accelerating. And if I look at the checklist, just to make sure, do a rapid start. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. There we go. <laughs> and we'll do the same with the other engines. Okay, as we taxied out, we've had a slight deterioration in the weather, but that's no problem for us in our Vulcan. This is a mighty, mighty machine. We are going to get ourselves in the air now from here at Bryce Norton. Takeoff technique slightly unusual. The Vulcan had a tendency to nose up during the takeoff roll. Uh, by that I mean the nose wheel would actually come off the ground. So there was a specific technique to do that, which is that we're going to hold it on the brake, set 80% of the RPM, release the brakes then go full power all the while pushing forward on the control column that's quite a normal technique but usually it's done for keeping the nose wheel steering active uh, and getting a bit more grip on that nose gear but on the Vulcan it will actually nose up and just like has modeled that in this aircraft which is really really great to see uh, the only airplane I've heard of doing that in the modern times the I know that some versions of the uh, Embraer 175 in some configurations uh, could do that which is disconcerting to pilots because we don't like uh, airplanes doing anything we aren't telling them to <laughs> so a nose wheel lifting off early is uh, a, could you know if it happened to me in uh, a commercial aircraft I'd be concerned about where the center of gravity is and so on but it you know it can also be completely benign uh, and was a known trait of the Vulcan so just another example of the little details that you get with this just flight uh, version really really quite interesting to, to learn to fly Okay, I'm going to turn up the audio for you a bit. Apologies if I go very quiet here. Hopefully you'll get the best of both worlds. Let's release the parking brake, which is down there. That's gone. Holding it on the tow brakes. We're going to go to 80% on the RPMs, which are down here. She wants to go. So we'll release the brakes. Forward on the stick full power. We're going to rotate around about 150 knots just before. Absolutely awesome sounds. I, I love what they've done with them. There's 100 knots, still keeping the forward pressure, otherwise the nose will lift. There's 150, rotating. Smoothly to neutral and then back up. And away we go. Lots of climb, gear up. Already passing 200 knots now, and this is where the Vulcan just really comes into its own. 
it's got so much power when you're at full throttle on these engines absolutely screaming away <laughs> look at this glorious Right, well, we can't do this all day. The aeroplane does have a sort of a set limit on its engines and throttles, as you'd expect. So we're going to reduce the power back down to the, I believe it's around the 90% range. Let me just check the numbers. Yes, we want 90%. And then we're going to move this selector to cruise and close that down. Now, we've managed to trigger a warning. I don't know what it's warning us about. That seems to have gone. <laughs> no doubt I've done something very, very wrong. And now we'll accelerate the aircraft. I can actually go back to 95%. Very precise throttle control needed. I need to adjust my sensitivity for this aircraft. My, uh, my throttles are a little bit sticky for it. There we go. And now we can accelerate up to 250, which we'll do for a while. And then we'll accelerate even faster. Um, it's a very quick airplane once you get it up to altitude. By the way, even the windscreen wipers work. I'm not sure they'd be working at this speed or not, but there you go. <laughs> um, as we go outside the aircraft, look at that absolutely glorious machine. Um, yeah, you can see that these landing lights have actually retracted themselves. That's true of the real aircraft. Above 180 knots, they retract, and now they're just pointing down sort of pointlessly. Um, all of this is in the Just Flight manual, and you can obviously find the switches and correct that as required um, quite where the landing light switch is right now i don't know <laughs> there is so much to learn on this airplane it's amazing by the way look at these flight control gauge i really like this we can actually see them moving that's the elevons or elevators and ailerons really nice now this airplane is very maneuverable as you would expect um, although perhaps it's a little bit more maneuverable than you might anticipate it's a very very powerful airplane uh, but it's also a you know it's a military aircraft so it is able to fly uh, quite extreme maneuvers it's got big control surfaces too and that lovely delta wing which puts it in a really nice place for maneuverability it's incredibly stable without the autopilot uh, i'm having no trouble here just a little bit of trim needed and you can go hands off quite easily and it just has no trouble just cruising along but where it really shines is if you want to start giving it a bit of uh, a bit of aileron and getting it into some sweeping maneuvers it's just amazing no trouble giving it a barrel roll here it gives me no difficulty this isn't really a barrel roll <laughs> this is a descending spiral really but there we go um, and you can see there's even a, a g meter up on the uh, the glare shield there as you go through the speed it eventually starts restricting the control movement to help protect the airplane it isn't it isn't a fight shit after all so it's really best in that slightly lower speed area so you can see now full stick here is a lot more restricted because of our high airspeed we're up at 350 knots so as i 0.7 mac as you can see so if we raise the nose again get that airspeed back and you can see now we're getting much more control out of it keep that speed coming back to 50 knots there start nosing over now this is what can happen i'm at high power with the nose high and i'm in that problem zone where it's struggling to get the nose down so i'm actually going to take the power off in the hope that that will enable me to drop the nose and prevent a stall which does seem to help a little bit so yeah slight pitch up tendency with power on on this aircraft as we saw during the takeoff roll something else that's interesting with it is it the airplane i don't know what that's saying look at this warning what's that saying you see you see i'm not sure um but yeah something else that's really interesting with it is that with that amount of power available you forget this is the 301 so this is the more powerful engine a bit more powerful than the 201 in the other the other model included um, but you can get yourself out of quite a lot of trouble with those engines they are amazingly powerful especially for the weight of this aircraft now we did bring with us um, some uh, loading into the oh no we haven't uh, this is an empty airplane so that's why it's uh, yeah even even more maneuverable fantastic for air shows and the, the like we can, of course, open the bomb bay doors ourselves, which is quite good fun. So let's put that to open. And underneath, there they are. Fantastic. Really quite a unique experience. Not one I've had in Flight Simulator before. By a big bomber like this. And just look how pretty it is.
Now, Just Flight have, of course, uh, also captured the fantastic smoke trails left by these uh, not particularly fuel efficient engines. So if you go full power, there they are. Fantastic. This is a, a, another iconic piece of design, or not design, but uh, of the characteristics of the Vulcan. The, the trails of black smoke coming out of those engines. Look how she flies. No trouble at all. Just a beautiful machine to take over and get a bit of a, get a bit of stick time on. Absolutely lovely. With all this power, we'll, it, it, you know, this airplane can climb up and it can cruise at high Mach numbers, at high altitude, uh, relatively airliner-ish in that sense. So you can do some longer range flights with it, no trouble. Um, it does have uh, a fairly decent range. Of course, it can burn through that quickly if you run these engines at high power. Um, there is a glitch in this version that I'm using uh, to do, that gives it slightly higher fuel burn, but I'm sure that will be fixed by the release version. By the way, look at that black underbelly. Slightly unusual design or paint scheme on this livery. But there we go. Now this aircraft does have an autopilot so now we're reaching our sort of cruise look at this rocketing through 36,000 feet 2,500 feet per minute this is where this airplane really comes into its own uh, its performance is it's pretty outrageous obviously we are light we don't have all the fuel in the world and we don't have all the the weapons that it would otherwise be carrying but those four Olympus engines just a huge amount of thrust for an airplane that is not actually all that big um, for especially to have four of them really really amazing machine anyway let's see if we can get the autopilot engaged so this will be useful of course if you're planning on doing any longer sectors so what we're going to do is go down to the autopilot panel down here let's see if we can work this one out so what I'm going to do is make sure it's powered on which I'm hoping I've now done uh, I'm going to pull the engage switch so that's pulled uh, and then confirm that the in magnetic sector is showing white which is not I have not been uh, particularly successful with working out the autopilot. Again, this is not a full video on this aircraft. Uh, unfortunately, I just haven't had the time I would normally like to have. But as you can see, it is here, it is modelled, and it is co uh, correctly working. And Just Flight do provide the manual for that. So uh, you'll be able to spend some time experimenting, which will certainly be useful on those longer flights. If we go into the EFB, we can also see some uh, a few other features. So you can change in the settings how you want the altimeters to sink and so on. Realistic steer, auto, shoot, jettison, which we'll talk about on the landing. Um, we can change the configuration so we can set it for the different engine type if we fancy. Uh, we can remove the nose probe. So that is something that was used for air-to-air -air refueling but was not always fitted to the Vulcans. But of course, 607, the one we're in today, very famously did use air-to-air -air refueling heavily to make such a long-range trip. So there we go. Um, and you can have different aerials showing MMR. I'm not sure where they would be. This is well above my knowledge of, <laughs> of the Vulcan, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it's just to show you what the Just Like team have put into this um, into this aircraft. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. We can also update the fuel directly in here. So we can just go and check in. Uh, we've got 86 at the moment. So let's put a 75. A bit less fuel. Shows you all the tanks as well. Almost as complex as the, uh, um, the Concorde ones. Finally, you can also tune in your TACAN channels and so on directly through the EFP if you find that easier. Because, of course, it can be a little bit fiddly trying to use all these different uh, UHF um, dials and so on. Uh, but still possible. It all works. It's all here. Sadly, for an airplane as beautiful as this, it does suffer from Microsoft Flight Simulator's sort of uh, outside spot view chase plane um, misframing I'll call it uh, so here we have one of the most beautiful shots uh, in flight simulation history <laughs> as far as I'm concerned anyway we've got the Vulcan flying up in the cruising levels above a stunning layer of cloud and what does Microsoft Flight Simulator do it just frames it right at the bottom and distorts it with the wide angle very frustrating it's a real shame it's not in the middle like it used to be in previous versions but look at that a whole load of empty screen <laughs> and our, our beautiful airplane distorted and put to the very bottom um, still uh, there we go it is absolutely absolutely lovely to look at it from all angles anyway and just to be clear this is of course a, a Microsoft Flight Simulator feature not a Just Flight Vulcan feature this is just the way the camera system is set up 
I like, by the way, these red rotating beacons. Really nice, very, very iconic part of the uh, of the Vulcan, and they've done a really good job modeling them um, within the confines of the simulator to give that appearance of, instead of being a, a flashing strobing light, they're sort of a rotating light. And if you start to get some, as we get the airplane up into the light, you can really see some of the details going on in those panels underneath and the texturing. This is where it really shines compared to that sort of reflective surface you can see here, much more muted and oily and uh, uh, matte but functional surface of the, of the Vulcan bomber. Now, as you would expect, low-level handling for an aircraft like this, uh, this is what it's something it's designed to be very good at, and it is absolutely lovely. That delta wing, large control surfaces. If you keep the speed back at something quite reasonable, you can get a huge amount of maneuverability out of it. Look at this, just lovely. And then those engines are ready. If you keep them at a nice high RPM, you can kick them in, and it will accelerate so fast, and then you can climb up out of the way. Fantastic. Of course, if you want to try your hand at a little bit of display flying, this is a really, really excellent excellent uh, simulation to do it with i absolutely love flying this airplane around at a low level and these low speeds it's such a treat really really enjoy it so you've got keep the engine spooled up uh, i'm keeping them sort of above 60 percent if i can and then you can bring the nose around and then what's so impressive with this delta wing is that you can keep pulling 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 and as the speed washes off you can just start squeezing that power on and it's got loads of power to give loads of angle of attack that you can go to and look at that She's actually accelerating around this corner now, even though I'm pulling, well, what's that, we're over, up, up at 2G, and then we can just accelerate away. It's just such a treat. And then you can power off a little bit, roll the wings level, no trouble at all. Got the airfoot over there, so you could fly a nice display routine. Let's roll it into the turn, get the power on. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's really, really fun, and I'm really enjoying it. And then we just keep pulling to make sure we don't sink any further. And she has no trouble complying with that. It is absolutely fantastic. And then if we get the power full power on, watch the airspeed. There's 240, 250. She's climbing. So try and keep it nose down, 250. And then we can just heave the nose up. And away we go. Absolute rocket. Fantastic. What fun. By the way, for those longer flights, it does also have modelled the sun visors, which is always a nice sign of... Uh, you can even place them as you want to, uh, but that's a nice sign of detail. I like that. Here's our colleague, by the way, helping us out. Okay, it's now time to bring in the Vulcan 4A landing. Something really exciting, quite different in this machine. First of all, we have speed brakes in the Vulcan, but they're a little bit different. They're two positioned, as you'll see on the outside now. Hopefully, you can still hear me over the, the roar of those Olympus engines. Uh, if we go one position, they deploy and then go to medium drag, and then we have a full drag position. So you can't choose in between those. Those are the three positions, stowed, medium drag, full drag. So for now, we'll have them stowed, and we're going to decelerate to sort of 180 knots and 1,000 feet for our circuit height. Um, so we can do that on the radio altimeter in front of us. There's not much terrain around to affect it. We're going to land in on runway 25, so that's uh, Bryce Norton over there. So we're basically turning now onto downwind for that, uh, that leg. So bringing the nose round. I'll keep it at 2,000 feet for now, and... We are gradually descending, so let's get that nose up a little bit. Yeah, speed 190 knots there, so that's pretty good for now. <laughs> I'm not very familiar with this airplane. There will be power datums and so on that you can get used to. Again, this is all in the instructions and the tutorial flight that Just Flight provide. So we'll keep the speed about here. Downwind, shortly we'll lower the gear. No flaps to extend, being a delta wing, so all we can do is just slow down and raise the nose. This is one of the very few airplanes in Flight Simulator where I actually like to land with the 
uh, seat in the up position I think it actually gives you the, the visual authority you need by the way a bit of fun uh, that just shows how far we've come with simulators look at the reflections in this sun visor you can actually see the dials changing um, there so there's our VSI so that's it going down if I you nose up that's it going up just to prove it is real uh, I think that's absolutely brilliant but there we go but for now we'll fly it here so 180 knots a bit more power needed okay time to lower the landing gear so I'm going to drop the wheels down they come bit more power needed quite complex gear mechanism but there they go locked in I'm doing a very very lazy circuit here so we'll bring the airplane round so 180 knots next step we're going to bring back to about just over 170 knots and deploy the first bit of those uh, spoilers so let's just bring the airplane around to line up better on a better downwind of that runway right time to slow down so there we are now back at so that's 180 so let's come back to just over 170 send down to a thousand feet and we'll put those spoilers out to the mid position the reason you might do that on an airplane like this is to keep those engines spooled up to the uh, nice high power setting so they're more responsive you can see we're definitely a bit high coming around the corner here this is where the Vulcan just handles beautifully. Still a bit fast, just powering back. I'm going to go full speed brake for a little bit. Two whites, two reds. Back to the mid position. Get the nose up. There's the 170. Power on. Get that rate of descent to something more normal, just under 1,000 feet per minute. Next step, final approach, we're going to fly at about 160 knots. So in fact, let's just keep bringing it back towards that. So the view is absolutely terrible. There we go. That's a really lucky that we're even in the right place here. Going to need a bit of power. Let's sit up in our nose high position, and that just gives us a better view. Getting slow. Power on. Now we're going to land. Going to be very nose high on final approach. 158, there we go. 700 feet per minute should be about right. Um, very nose high and then we are going to deploy the chute by setting these two to stream and it will deploy the chute out the tail which is pretty cool so just a terrible view but there we go right 158 so about on speed looks about right out the wind outside nose high profile of a delta wing on final the Vulcans came in very nose high quite quite iconic really so there you can see 158 now time to go full speed break and start Bringing the trickling the power back as we come back to our threshold speed of 145-ish into the flare, powering down. There's touchdown. Speed brakes are out at full. Keeping the nose up, I'm going to set these to stream, and that will hopefully. Nope, that didn't work. Let's try again. Oh, down to stream. There we go. That deploys the. Uh, the drag chute and we'll get on those tow brakes pretty cool like seeing drag chute animated <laughs> managed to use most of the runway there with my <laughs> not so standard technique and there it goes jettisoned itself how cool is that absolutely brilliant what fun So there we go, that's all for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. A really interesting aeroplane and I think, in my opinion, a fantastic rendition of it. This was a preview build sent over by Just Flight, so thank you to them for sending it over. Not a full review, this is still a work in progress and there'll be some changes for the release version. For example, those engine sounds that we're looking forward to hearing that iconic Vulcan howl later on. But still, absolutely lovely sounds included on this 301 version and a really, really detailed aeroplane that you can definitely sink your teeth into if you want to learn a lot about the Vulcan and its systems and just like it come along with all the doc documentation you could want uh, as I said the pricing is uh, slightly lower than I would expect frankly for an aircraft uh, like this but there we go uh, and releasing in just a couple of days on the 28th of, no of November in 2023 more videos guides live streams to come on the channel so do please subscribe if you'd like to see those otherwise we'll see you again in one of those videos or live streams please do keep safe and well bye bye